Hey guys, it's Bob Patch for College here. Uh, I do apologize for the long delay between videos, and I know that I told you guys that it probably posted by April 23rd and I got the iPad. But once I got to thinking, uh, I was like, you know, maybe it'd be more beneficial to those if I just wait a little while, you know, wait and see what I can do with it between now and then for my college classes and things like that. And then the even longer delay came whenever finals came up, and I was wrestling to get finished with those and struggling and spending all my time dedicating all those things to my studies. So I wasn't really able to post it up in a, in a short amount of time as I wanted to, and uh, I do apologize for that. And I do thank those who have subscribed and commented since my first video. I appreciate the comments and the encouragement, and I'm glad that you guys found the first one to be resourceful, and I hope you'll find the rest of them to be resourceful as well, and I'm glad that you guys commented as you're looking forward to the next ones. But, without further ado, I have got the iPad, and I have got a lot of things I want to talk to you about in relation to the iPad, and let you know exactly how far, or this, this far along, how it's helped me in college, and how it's helped me do different things for my classes. So remember uh, throughout the video, just if you see something that you like, remember to comment, subscribe. By the end of it, if you have any other questions or if you think, well, maybe, you know, I had a question about this, what will it do for me in this aspect of college, let me know. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to look into it and try to figure it out for myself and make a video and let you guys know. But now let's get into what I've learned so far and what I think you can do and how it helps you in college. Stay tuned. So here is my iPad and plethora of accessories. I have the iPad dock the iPad case from Apple, and the Apple Bluetooth keyboard for my um, iPad, which I showed all of you guys briefly in my last video. But uh, I just want to go ahead and show you before I, put in, before I start using the accessories, just give you an overview of what I found out about the iPad. First off, one of the things that a lot of people have been complaining about with the iPad is the small, is the small scroll bar at the bottom that says slide to unlock. They said it has the same exact size as the iPhone. They said they want one that's bigger to cross the entire thing. This is my thing with that. I like the small scroll bar, the, the slide tone lock. And my reason behind that is, who wants to have to drag their finger from here all the way across to get their iPad to unlock? I like a little small uh, slide to unlock. You know, that, that's up to you guys if that's what you like. That's what I like. Uh, I like the way that goes. So now I'm just going to enter my passcode so I can get this thing open. All right, and the first thing you see that comes up is the natural home screen. If any of you have an iPad or if any of you have seen any other videos, this should become natural to you. Uh, I already have created my six icon dock here at the bottom um, instead of having just the four that the iPhone limits you to. You can have six on the iPad, so I've already taken advantage of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it into landscape mode here and show you guys. Uh, that it does turn, I mean, it, does, it turns anyway. I mean, it's the whole Steve Jobs. Uh, you shouldn't have to hold it a certain way. You should be able to hold it anyway, and the iPad work for you. And that is true. You can do that. And, of course, you have the accelerometer uh, switch here on the side. That's going to keep it from turning if you should lock it. All right, so as far as college goes, the first thing, if you're a college student, you're going to have email. So here's the email here, down here at the top. You see, this is if you hold it in portrait mode, you have this on the left side where you can pull down, drop down, then you have the actual message, and you can reply, delete. But if you hold it this way in landscape mode, you have all your messages over here on the side, and you can tap and see that email message over here on the side, like that. Like here is something for a scholarship. Uh, an email. So, I mean, like I said, for a college student, you're going to be working with emails constantly. So that's one thing. It's very intuitive design. Layout's very, very good. I think that anyone who uses this will be able to find that it's very easy to use. The interface is very easy to use, and it's actually very fun to use. It's, it's, you know, emailing with the touch of your hand is much more intuitive and a lot more fun than just doing it on a regular keyboard like you would with a keyboard, I mean, with a computer. But uh, is it better than a computer? I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's on the same level. I mean, it's, it still sends. You still receive. But it's just a different way of doing it, and it's more fun, in my opinion, and more intuitive. Now, going back to the home screen. Some of the things you'll be using, obviously, Safari. And right now, I have Facebook up, which is not a very, you know, educational website. But you can Google things. Um, one thing that I just want to tell you right now that we're going to go through while we're on here is how I took a, 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 an assignment for my macroeconomics class. And I took the assignment, brought it home, and I did everything required on my iPad. So that's one great thing that you'll be able to find out with the iPad. So here's Google. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can type anything, uh, like I said, macroeconomics. Let's just go straight to that. Macroeconomics. Okay, it comes up there. 
and there you go, you have Wikipedia articles, things like that. You can, yeah, you can study things like this, look stuff up, uh, just like you would if you're on a laptop. You need to browse the web, look for a source. If you need Spark Notes, things like that. If you're a high school student, look up novel notes, things like that. I mean, that's right here at the touch of your finger, and it's all right here on the iPad. So that's another thing that you need to know about is just having the... Uh, the web right there to your hand, and I will want to tell you that people have said that it's it's a lot of fun just to have the web at the touch of your hand, and it is. It's very fun, very intuitive. Uh, going, I know this is supposed to be like a college for you, but going back to the whole means of the high school. I mean, here I am in the bookstore, and most of you think, well, there's going to be books in there, but you have to buy them. Let me just read you off a list real quick of all the books that I got for free. The Importance of Being Earnest, Heart of Darkness, A Tale of Two Cities, The Picture of Dorian Gray, Sense and Sensibility, Romeo and Juliet. Frankenstein, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The United States Constitution, The King James Bible, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Pride and Prejudice, and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. These are just some of the books that are on the iBook store for free. And all these are classics, and I don't know about you guys, but I read every single one of these books throughout high school. So think about it. You don't need a copy, a little paperback copy to carry on with you anymore. You can just take your iPad with you, and it's all here at the touch of a button. So let's take one of these books. Um... One of my personal favorites was the picture of Dorian Gray, so we're going to open that up. And right here, you have the complete work, the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And here you go, you, know, you can just slide them like that with your finger. Uh, and one thing that I wish I would have had when I was back in high school is that you have this display. But up here at the top, you can click on the search button, and you can actually search the book for a word. Any word in the book, you can search for that magnifying glass there. You can search for any word. So if you have to do a paper on... You know, what does darkness mean in this novel, or what does beauty mean in this novel? You can search the entire novel for the word beauty and find all that. For, I mean, that, that's great for evidence from the novel if a teacher asks for that. Even for college students, you know, whenever they do start putting college textbooks on here, if you have a certain question or essay you have to work on, you can search the entire book for that. You can also do the font size and the screen brightness as well. Now, let's see if there's a word on here that you don't know. I'm just going to pick one. Because, I mean, this is, this is actually a pretty easy book. But let's see here. Here's the word spectator. Okay, let me see if I can pull that up there. Here's the word spectator. I'm going to click on that. And you see what pops up. Copy, dictionary, bookmark, and search. If you click dictionary, it gives you the entire definition of the word spectator. From a dictionary. Pronunciation, all kinds of things like that. You can also switch this. You can also click the search button, and that's going to search the entire book for the word spectator. So that once again, I mean, that's just a tool that you can use at any level of education. I mean, a dictionary right there to tell you what the word is. You don't even have to leave the app to go to a dictionary app or to a dictionary.com on the web browser in order to find out what the word means. It's right there. So even this is better than reading a regular book or using a laptop. A laptop cannot do this at this time where you just go to an, a book. The Kindle can't do that where you're just on the book and you just pick a word and it gives you a definition. So that right there is something that's great about the iPad that you can use for education all in itself. So the iBook store and all of its tools are great. Also, for those of you who are in like macroeconomics or journalism or anything like that, we have to keep up with current events or know how to write journals or look up articles. There are a plethora of apps already in the App Store for that. I mean, you have USA Today, which is a wonderful app. You have the New York Times, which is a great one, the Washington Journal, and the Associated Press. All of those are absolutely magnificent apps for looking at things like that. I'm just going to show you the Associated Press. Um, this is this is a really really good app that I've come to find. I mean, just getting your you know getting uh, your up-to-date news and, and articles, things like that. You know, you just need to look up something really quick. Top news, see, I mean, top news here. I mean, deep sea ice crystals, uh, stymie Gulf oil, oil leak fix. Uh, Senator Bob Bennett ousted at Utah GOP. You know, just things like that. You can just click, and you have the entire article right there. I mean, it's just it's right here. You can read the entire article. Uh, you can email the article to yourself. You get the actual link. I mean, it's just it's it's incredible. What all this app will do, what all of the what all of the uh, news apps will actually do. So I mean, it's just a, it's just nice to have and very convenient, very informative and very educational all around. Uh, that pretty much does it for the apps version. I mean, there is this Wikipedia here. I mean, guys, you you usually are told not to use Wikipedia, so I'm gonna have to. I'm not gonna get so much into that app because it's not really that phenomenal for that. But uh, if you just need to look up something really quick for your own enjoyment or for your own amusement. Dude, it's, it's, it's really nice to have. I mean, just be able to click on it and just, I mean, I'm kind of a big Braves fan. I'm from Georgia, so I go up here to search in the search bar, and I can type in Atlanta, and there's Braves right there. It comes up in the search bar. And, I mean, it gives me Atlanta Braves, the Wikipedia page. I mean, it's just, it's incredible what this thing will do. 
the apps are so powerful for educational means if you find the right apps. I mean, they have a section on the app store that just says education. I'm coming up to about 8 minutes on this video, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and um, come back and I'm going to talk about two very, very important applications that are very, very good for you to have uh, if you're going to have your iPad and very, very good for education. So stay tuned for that. It'll be part two of this review. Thanks.